Australian billionaire and climate activist Mike Cannabrooks is putting his money where his mouth is. He's teamed up with a huge Canadian infrastructure company, Brookfield, to launch an $8 billion bid for AGL. If the takeover was to be successful, they would invest another $10 billion and accelerate the death of coal in this country. It would be a seismic shift in the grid and would reshape not just New South Wales, but Australia's energy market. Ed Boyd, our business reporter, joins us now. The board was considering this bid late yesterday. They've officially rejected it this morning. What have they had to say, Ed? Look, the AGL board of, were always going to reject this bid, Laura, with a bidding process you never accept the first bid. So they've knocked it back on the grounds that it, it's, it's not valuing AGL at as much money as AGL think they're worth. They released a short statement. I'll just read it for you really briefly here. Um, it says... Uh, where is it? Uh, the AGL Energy Board considers that the unsolicited proposal, which was received on the morning of Saturday 19th of February, materially undervalues the company on a charge of control basis and is not in the best interest of AGL Energy shareholders. Look, Two years, three years ago, sorry, Laura, AGL shares were worth about $20 a piece, valuing the company at $14 billion. Since then, it's gone down significantly in value. It's currently sitting at a... Well, this, this offer is at $8 billion a share, $8 billion for all the shares. I think the AGL board is just going to say no to this bid initially and drive up, drive up a bit more price, a bit more interest in this company, show why it's such a good asset that people like Mike Cannon Brooks, along with Brookfield, are interested in buying it. So this is just the start, I'd say, of quite a long bidding process for AGL, and the value is mm. just going to keep going up and up and up as there's more interest in this company. Look, in the end, Ed, Mike Cannon Brooks and Brookfield itself are looking to make money, not just change Australia's electricity grid for, for the sake of it. So what does this tell us about the future of coal and renewable energy? Well, we know that there are billions and billions of dollars in investment sitting out there that people were ready to spend on green assets and move into green energy. There's lots of money floating around in the market and investors are ready to tap things like AGL to convert it into a more green asset. So there's going to be a lot of people that are interested in what Mike Cannon Brooks and Brookfield are doing here. But what it means for Australia's energy market is clearly coal's power station days are getting numbered very quickly just in the last couple of weeks. Yes, last week, Origin Energy announced it would shut Iraring, Australia's largest coal-fired power station, seven years early. So that's 2025. That's pretty soon. That's going to create a bit of a gap in Australia's national energy market. Then a couple of weeks before that, we had AGL itself saying it was going to be closing its two major power stations a couple of years earlier than expected. One of them was Liddell, which is closing next year. Then we've got Bayswater in 2033 and Luoyang A in 2045. So the grid is going to have these big holes in it that need to be filled by something. Right now, we've been talking with AMO, which, manif which is the regulator for the national mm. energy grid, and they were saying last week that they don't see any issues with Arara closing early because so many people now have solar panels on their roofs. Green energy is coming in. The problem is it's not on all the time. And what coal is, is it provides that constant baseload power for the grid constant security that if you flick a light switch, it's going to be on. So this is something that Australia and the government really need to figure out very soon because clearly coal is starting to come to an end in this country. Because one of the main things, Laura, is these, are, these power stations are, are all very old. They're getting older and older and less mm. efficient. And these companies are saying it's not economic for them to run them anymore. So that's one of the main reasons why they're shifting away from coal.